video is a little bit different than my normal. This is not like a fitness or nutrition related video, although some people think that it does have something to do with nutrition or fitness, but it actually doesn't. And I realized that there's so much of my life that's on YouTube and Instagram and there's just some stuff that is so like normal for me and part of just me that I realize I've never really talked about and I forget how not common it is. But as you can tell by the title of today's video, this is a video talking about why I personally don't drink, why I've never drank. Um, I know a lot of people don't ever believe that when I say like I've literally never drank. And I don't mean like I've never tasted it because I've tasted it, but I've never legitimately had a drink in my entire life. Kind of want to take you guys through a little bit of like my story, why that is, how I navigate being a 26 year old who doesn't drink, some just like experiences and just kind of talk about it. So let's just jump on it. Okay, so let's go back to 16 year old Manders. I had my very first boyfriend, his name was Drew, and his group of friends were a little bit older than me at the time. I think I was like, I don't know, I was a freshman in high school, I think that means 15, and they were juniors or going into seniors, I don't exactly remember, but I know they were a few years older than me. He was friends with a lot of like the cool guys who had boats and trucks and stuff, and so they would have these parties at their parents' houses when their parents weren't home. And that was kind of like my first social party drinking experience. And I can remember being that age, like my first time actually experiencing it and feeling so incredibly uncomfortable around just the alcohol in general, but not really understanding why. You know, like I was this young girl, I was going through puberty, I was trying to be cool, this was my first boyfriend. And even though there was the pressure obviously to drink at that age, which was underage, of course, and I don't suggest ever drinking underage, obviously, just put out a little disclaimer, but I still never did it. Like I just remember feeling this weird, I don't even know like if uncomfortable is the right word, but it was just like so nerve wracking to me for some reason. And I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. I think that was really more so when I started noticing that I had significant anxiety, but at that time and like at that period, I don't feel like mental health issues were talked about as openly as they are now. Like back then we didn't have like younger kids on TikTok or social media. I think like that was still the MySpace days, I'm pretty sure. And so I was not really as open about my anxiety solely because I just didn't really understand it. So I would say that 15 to 16 was kind of, maybe even a little bit younger, like whatever, whatever age you are going into freshman year was when I started realizing that so many people my age or a couple years older than me were drinking alcohol. A lot of people wanted to know if there was a specific, like instance that caused me to be like i'm never drinking again and although i don't necessarily think it was one specific instance there is one story that i will tell you guys that sticks out to me the most in the deep depths of my memory and so with with that boyfriend drew that i was talking about we had this trip over the summer to his best friend's lake house in georgia and we were the people who were driving everybody because drew had just got his very first truck and so we drove from florida to georgia to do this like family lake house trip and the people that owned the lake house they their son who was friends with drew they also had an older son who was in college at the time and I did not know this and I don't even think anybody really involved knew this but the college brother came home from college with a ton of friends and it immediately went from like a younger kid lake house summer trip to like a full-blown rager with a bunch of drunk college guys drinking like out of control. So Drew and I, we had our own room and the more that the college kids started drinking, keep in mind I was like 15 at the time, the more upset I got and I can vividly remember crying in the room and telling him like, I, I wanna go home, like you need to drive me home. And so bless his heart, he did. He drove me all the way back to Florida. I think we'd only been there for like a day and a half and we were supposed to be there for a week. And it was, because you know like looking back now it was because of the drinking like i did not know that it was going to be just full of crazy drunk people and i was so uncomfortable that was really like the last social party-ish thing that i can remember that made me 
kind, like it wasn't just like an executive decision. I just remember feeling that way and being like, okay, I, I don't like this scene. I don't like what's going on. And at that point, it was still a few years prior to me moving out of my house. And, you know, I, I go back and forth with opening up about my dad and my family issues because I don't really think it's fair to put like my family trauma out on the internet. But before actually moving out, and I moved out early, I moved out just before my 18th birthday, but before moving out and before my parents got divorced, there are some alcohol-related memories, uh, correlations, and by that I just mean any time that I would see alcohol involved typically resulted in some type of argument, very angry, um, toxic behavior, falling like I have a lot of memories of that as a child not from me but from um, my father and I now like being an adult and looking back obviously I feel like there is some deep-rooted trauma with that but as far as like the rest of my family goes I don't think that there was like a specific alcohol related incident that caused me to just end up being the way that I am I would probably have to guess that it was like a collective a collective thing of negative alcohol experiences for me. Now, I will say that mental health issues do run in my family and there is a huge relation between mental health issues and addiction. I don't think anybody in my family was necessarily an alcoholic. I did see a few family members struggle with drug addiction and I do think that maybe that caused me to be a little bit hesitant because addiction is something that I feel like happens very frequently with alcohol, especially if you do have mental health issues. But I think just like overall between the stuff that I experienced like in high school and then in the earlier ages of my family issues, I think the biggest thing for me was just that seeing people's behavior change and the impairment gives me such an uneasy, anxious, uncomfortable feeling. And I don't necessarily know if it's because I don't know what the real person is, but there's just something about that altered state that I don't feel comfortable with. Like, I think that also just has to do with anxiety and needing to be in control. Like, I don't want to be out of control in my own body. And I strongly, strongly dislike seeing other people out of control. It's just such a weird thing. I don't know why that is, but I've been like that for as long as I can remember. Like, whenever somebody acted out of the norm, whether it was from alcohol or not, and I just saw their behavior change, I would like go into a full on panic. It's just so weird. And so even to this day, when I start to see people deteriorate and get drunk, I don't mean deteriorate like in a horrible way, but just like their personality starts to change, you know, like the more they start drinking, the different, the more different that they act. And when that starts to happen is when like I'm no longer in an okay state. So then fast forward like to my early 20s, I already moved out and living in my own apartment. When I was like 21 and 22, I started noticing some serious GI issues. And at the time, again, I didn't really understand. So I went to the doctor, went to a bunch of GI specialists. And after, I have like a bunch of videos on my IBS and GERD and all that stuff that they end up diagnosing me with, which who even knows? Like I've gotten so many diagnoses at this point that I don't even know what's real and what's not. But one of the first things when I went to like the second or third GI doctor, they always asked me, do you drink? And I was like, no. And they, you know, gave me this whole list of things that I should avoid, like spicy foods, acidic foods, high fat foods, alcohol, caffeine, all the stuff that I already limit as it is. And I just kind of remember when they were like, you know, you should be careful with drinking because one of the things that they told me with the other diagnosis was that my stomach lining was deteriorated from the H. pylori infection that I had, and therefore it makes it harder for me to digest things, and so alcohol could cause me to vomit. And I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I have a serious phobia of vomiting. I hate it. And I literally have been that way for my entire life. And so when he told me that, I was like, oh, perfect. Like, and it almost was like an an excuse for me because obviously, you know, as I was 21, 22, all of my friends at the time when they were inviting me places and there was alcohol involved, they would always 
you know, say like, oh, do you want to drink? And I'd be like, no, thank you. I don't drink. And a lot of people would initially push back with like, why, why not? Like it was such a weird thing. And so that whole stomach issue thing was a great excuse for me because for, in my experience, it's a lot easier to say to people, oh, I have like a really bad stomach condition and I get extremely sick if I drink alcohol. And for whatever reason, that's just like much more accepted. And I don't deal with like the back and forth, which I absolutely hate when people ask me why. I don't drink um, they just seem to have a little bit more sympathy for me instead of me saying I just choose not to and that's something that I just to this day I cannot wrap my head around and it drives me insane when people are like why why not just have one in and they, and they do that I, to me I feel like that makes me hate alcohol even more than I already do like there's something about the drinking in like a social setting or just drinking in general where a lot of people feel the need to pressure you into drinking what they're drinking or doing what they're doing and I just I don't do that and I hate having to argue back and forth with people in a social setting and be like the party pooper or whatever but it was just that the stomach thing gave me kind of like an easy way out although it was true I just relied on that a lot more to like explain to people when they asked me why I don't drink. And like as I started getting into my mid 20s and going to therapy more consistently, I kind of started to like unravel all these deep rooted childhood traumas. And like I said about not being in control, I think that plays a huge role in it for me. And I just kind of started to understand a little bit more about why I am so fearful of drinking. It's it really is. It's just a fearful thing. I don't want to be different. I want to be who I am all the time. I don't want to be a different person when I'm under the influence of something and that whole entire process just freaks me out. And so yeah, it's just I think it is like a fear thing and I've never personally felt the need or like the desire to want to know what it's like to be drunk. And I think like one of the most asked questions when I was opening up about this, people were like, don't you ever want to know? And the honest answer is no, like I genuinely don't want to know because number one, I have so much anxiety that I feel like I would be one of those horrific, like annoying drunk people who cries and just like, I, I don't know, I don't want to be that. <laughs> like, nothing against people who drink, like that's your prerogative, that's fine, but I just choose not to and I've never really had the desire to even as a kid. And I don't know if that's just because like I was okay with who I was, like I didn't really fall into the peer pressure like even as a kid I never smoked weed ever in my entire life ever ever all the kids in school that would always do it and stuff like that I never felt that peer pressure to do it and even still as an adult I still don't feel that peer pressure whether it's alcohol or drugs or anything like that I also just think that I've been through enough relationships like even going back to my first boyfriend Drew I remember like the reason why we broke up <laughs> was because he cheated on me I'll literally never forget this with this girl Annie because he was drinking and he didn't know what he was doing and so like every experience that I've ever kind of had with people under the influence or alcohol it's just never been a positive one whether it was that or the people who were out of control drinking being different my extremely abusive father like there's just so many things to me that i i don't ever look at alcohol and think like oh like that sounds like a good idea to me i just don't i i know that's very weird and not a lot of people in their 20s feel that way but it's just it is what it is and i've realized that it is very abnormal and people want to know why so hence why i decided to make this video i was reading through a lot of people's questions about this stuff and asking like do i ever feel like i'm the party pooper or you know like issues with social settings and going out and dating and I think that this is just one of those things like for me personally where it's just a part of who I am and I am never going to compromise that for anybody I'm with and it was like one of the first things that Austin and I talked about when we first started dating and you know he I'm sure you guys can tell based on the way Austin is like he's so understanding and he is so sensitive towards that and he will never like honestly any of his friends have never been that way towards me either like they've never really even given me a lot of pushback some of them have asked why I think just out of like curiosity everybody for the most part since I've moved here and like we've been in social settings has been very accepting of it and I would also just kind of like to say this coming from someone who doesn't drink it is so wonderful when when somebody offers you a drink and you say like oh no thank you I don't drink and the person just replies with oh okay like can i get you something else if you are somebody you know who is on the other end who does drink and is offering a drink to somebody who you don't know does not drink 
the best reply you can give them is just acceptance and move on. The worst thing just me personally, I think is when people consistently badger and pressure you. Like we are adults. If somebody wants to choose to not drink, you should not be, in my opinion, pressuring them to do something they don't feel comfortable with because you don't know like what kind of trauma they've been through. You don't know why they're not drinking and it's not really your place to ask why. I understand people are curious, but like in a social setting, it is so nice when people are just like, oh, okay, like no problem. What can I get you or whatever? And it was never an issue with Austin. It really has never been an issue um, with any of my relationships, except for if I was getting forced kind of to go out consistently and be around people who drink because my least favorite setting is bar settings with drunk people. I absolutely hate it. I just hate it so much and I, it's the worst. And so luckily Austin doesn't really do that. He'll go for like his friend's birthdays or when there's a specific social setting that we get invited to. And I think that's also something that I've had to learn how to balance because I don't want to be the person who never goes anywhere because they don't drink. I want to be the person who can go to a social setting and have fun and enjoy it, not be pressured to drink and still be a part of the social setting. However, I just personally don't love the bar setting, so we don't do that as often. And it's great because I ended up with someone who also is a homebody and who doesn't like to do that anyway. Like he would much rather, if he's going to drink, it would be like out at the pool and he doesn't drink to get drunk. I think that would cause an issue for me in my own relationship if the person I was with was consistently drinking just to get drunk or getting out of control. I guess I just kind of lucked out in this situation because even when Austin does drink, he just gets really tired and he just wants to fall asleep. It's not like I'm engaged to somebody who when they drink, they get really like violent or angry. That would be a huge no for me. But luckily, you know, Austin is not like that. He's very supportive. And if anyone has ever I, like consistently asked me, he has like stepped in in the past and be like, hey, like she's not drinking, leave her alone. And it's also good because I get to be the DD. So I kind of can play that card a little bit. And I've kind of learned like what settings to explain why I'm not drinking versus just rely on the stomach issues or be like, oh no, I'm driving tonight or whatever. It's just kind of taken a little bit of time. I think for the most part, every single person who knows me knows that I don't drink. So they just don't even ask me anymore, which is really nice. And it's just not something that I ever see myself doing. I mean, I've gone this entire time. It's been 10 years since I've first been around it and I've still never drank. I also personally think that it tastes awful and if I was going to like treat myself, I just feel like I would rather do it with like ice cream. If I'm going to get sick, you know, with something in my stomach, I would much rather go with ice cream than alcohol. I just, nothing that I've ever tasted because like sometimes, you know, in the past, like, um, I, you know, either like a friend or something be like, do you want to see what this tastes like? Like not pressuring me, but just asking. And I would be like, yeah, let me just see. And I would taste it and it just burns my throat. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a freaking loser and that's supposed to happen, but it's just, I don't like it. I've never, even from tasting a few different things, I'm like, ugh, like that's not something that I would want to drink. So I don't know. It's not something that I think tastes appetizing. <laughs> I know this video is getting really long. I figured it would be, but I wanted to kind of go through some of the questions that people had about like either why I don't drink or just in general things that people ask me about it. Most of these questions I kind of already went through when I was explaining everything else. Someone asked, does my absence from drinking impact your friendships? And no, because I truly feel like if you are a true friend, you're going to respect your friend's decision. And like, I would never pressure somebody to do something that they didn't feel comfortable with. Same with Austin. Like, in my opinion, that shouldn't affect your relationship because your partner should be respectful of your choices and vice versa. Like, I don't ever force Austin to not drink. Like, that's my own decision and he can do what he wants, but it's helpful that he's respectful to me. And it's just not something that he enjoys doing often so it's good but he also doesn't purposely put me in those situations consistently that make me uncomfortable how do i deal with peer pressure i kind of touched on this a little bit um i think it's just being secure with who you are and i really have not gotten 
a lot of people, at least in my mid 20s who have gotten angry that I don't drink. I felt like that was more so in my early 20s and kind of like pre 21 years old. I think that kind of peer pressure is for younger people and it's just because that's what they think is cool, but I've never been the cool kid. So I just don't really give a shit, honestly. <laughs> if I ever felt obligated to do it in outings with friends or family, no. I just think that you shouldn't need alcohol to be in a social setting. Like there's a difference between alcohol and social. Like those two things don't equal the same thing. It's just my feel on it. I don't feel the need to because I still am myself regardless of who's around or what the circumstances are. Do you carry something in your cup when you're at a bar? Yes. So what I typically like to do if I just don't feel like getting into it is get a sparkling water with lime and most people will think that it's like a vodka soda or something like that. And so if somebody who is like drunk, you know, asks me like, oh, let me get you a drink. I'd be like, no, I got one. Thanks. And it's freaking water. That's something I rely on heavily. Uh, especially if I don't want to get into talking about why I don't drink. Do I feel like I was missing out in my early 20s? No, not at all. I actually feel like I, if anything, I missed out because of being in relationships with people that I shouldn't have been. Like it wasn't related to alcohol. It was because I was like caught up in crappy relationships. <laughs> Nothing that alcohol would have changed anyway. If anything, it would have made it worse. Do you feel being the only one sober in a group of drunk people? To be 100% honest, I absolutely hate it when everyone gets so loud and they don't realize how loud they are and like I'm the only sober person I'm like lord please make it stop obviously since coronavirus this has not happened thank god we haven't had to go to a bar or anything in a really long time but I just like after I get back from a place like that and like the music is so loud I get such bad sensory overload and especially because when people drink they're typically very loud so whenever I would have to come back from stuff like that I need to just like sit in the room and just like be quiet and I'm just like please nobody talk to me for like a solid 12 hours are you straight edge yeah I guess I guess I would be considered that I guess I didn't even know that was still a thing um um people were asking about like if my family drank and like my mom's very Italian so obviously she would drink wine but like I don't really ever remember my mom being like a heavy drinker so no it was mostly just my my dad so there are so many like look at that there's so many questions on this I just I really feel like this is something that not a lot of people talk about and i think that if this is somebody who's a younger viewer maybe that's watching me and you don't feel the pressure to drink don't do it like don't be afraid to be different than other people because that's something that i think has actually gotten me farther in life and just more comfortable with myself is being okay with not being like everybody else you know not that it's wrong like if you want to drink again no judgment it's just I know that it's not the norm, but I'm okay with that. How much just being around people who are drinking affect you? I think it depends on the level. Like there are some, when it starts to get out of control and when people are like taking, I find like taking shots, shotgunning, anything where it's like intense, I'm like, oh, like my anxiety goes way up as opposed to just like people having a few drinks. That doesn't really bother me as much as people being wild and like rapidly spiraling out of control. Even this is so funny, but even thinking about like when I used to watch Jersey Shore and they would always be like out of control, I would literally feel anxious watching that show. So I think it's just the the spiraling and the change in people's behavior that makes me the most anxious. It's also a great question. How do you establish boundaries? I actually think that this is something I've learned through therapy and establishing boundaries is so important, whether you're in a relationship or just explaining to somebody in a social setting why you don't drink kind of how I've touched on and everything else I've talked about I think it depends on the situation honestly if you like don't feel comfortable explaining your why make something up who gives a shit like if this is about you and this is your choice and you need to establish those boundaries however you feel comfortable not every single person needs to know your life story not every single person needs to know the exact reason why but i think there's definitely been some times in social settings where if somebody is a little bit more pushy i kind of just push back just as hard something actually that my current therapist has taught me is to question people as to why they're doing what they're doing and that has worked for me in the past for sure like if somebody was basically trying to pressure me into having a drink like oh just have one i would just simply respond with um why why exactly do you want me to have one drink 
And usually the person is like thrown off because they've never been asked that question before because most people will just take it. Reaction is always just really interesting. They're like, ah, and it's just like, I don't know. I think if you don't feel comfortable establishing boundaries, like no, please stop asking me, I don't drink, then you can always kind of flip it onto that person and be like, hey, um, why are you pressuring me into drinking right now? And that kind of forces them to take a look at themselves and ask themselves why they're pressuring somebody to drink when that person doesn't feel comfortable are you going to have champagne at your wedding no like when i say i don't drink i literally mean i don't drink there's no like special occasions there's nothing i've never done it and i will not do it i'll probably um just do like sparkling apple juice or something also people have asked like does it stress me out when austin drinks like do i get mad at him and the answer is no mostly because like i said before he's very respectful about it and he actually doesn't change much so he just like i said gets tired um it doesn't bother me anymore and i think like the more i've gotten older the more i've just accepted it that other people are going to drink then the easier it's just been for me to you know, accept it and move on. It's mostly when people start to act very differently that I become more uncomfortable. How do you make friends or find people who don't drink? I don't know anyone other than Austin's mom, which I think is so cool. Like we always hang out together if we, you know, prior to Corona, obviously, if we had something to do and we were there together, we would always be the two that were like not drinking together. So that's always nice. But I do feel like it's something that's not common. So I don't know other than my best friend. I don't have people who don't drink. It's just, I don't know, it's part of people's lives. It's part of social gatherings. So it is what it is. And I just have accepted that I'm not them. And that's, I don't know. I don't know how to make friends that don't drink. It's all kind of like who you surround yourself with. You know, like when I was a kid and I was getting into what I liked, I was around people who were in theater. I was in theater. That's all I did every single weekend was shows, theater shows, dance shows, competitions, this and that. And those kids weren't into that. So... I think maybe that played a role as well because I just wasn't around people who were constantly drinking or going to parties and stuff when I was a little bit older. I think maybe finding a hobby that doesn't revolve around drinking would be helpful, but for the most part, I do know that it is difficult to meet friends and people who don't drink. I hope that answers your questions about my non-drinking. If you have any others that I missed, definitely leave them down in the comment section. And I hope this kind of just opens up a little bit more conversation for people who don't really want to drink, but they don't know how to tell people they don't want to drink. So that's all I got for you in this super long video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you so much and I will see you in my next one.